Well, hello there, folks, and welcome back to The Whiskey Friend with me, Alan. New week, new video, another brand new video. And as you can see on my bar today, I have a bottle. I'm going to continue this little theme of age-stated whiskies, 12s, 15s, 18s. I've now got a whiskey on my bar that I haven't tackled for at least three years, maybe four years. A little bit of backstory on this bottle, guys. This was the whiskey that changed the whiskey friend's life. This was the whiskey that took me from a collector to a sipper to YouTube. If it wasn't for this whiskey, guys, there would be no whiskey friend. There'd be no whiskey friend YouTube channel and we wouldn't be talking together, me and thee, today. So this is a whiskey which I fell out of love with probably three or four years ago, purely due to Brown Foreman who currently look after Glendronach at the minute, changed the, their processes. Did they change it? Have they changed it? Haven't they changed it? I'm not too sure. But I haven't been round, and to be fair, I haven't bought a bottle of anything from Glendronach in the last three or four years, which is amazing because I've quite a few Glendronachs up here above me. I was a big, big, massive Glendronach fan, Billy Walker fan. It was my go-to, got me into sherry, got me into whiskey, changed my whole life on whiskey, this Glendronach 15. Not this one in particular. This is the Rachel Barry's one. The one that changed my life was the Billy Walker one. I think you can still see one just sitting here. That's a Billy Walker 15. This is the Rachel Barry one. This one is matured in ex Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso sherry casks from Spain. So yes, as I say, it's been a while. This was life-changing whiskey. I've not been back to it a wee while. I'm looking, should I buy a new bottle of 15? It's getting to the time to decide whether to buy one. I'm going to leave it open to you guys to tell me whether I should buy one. What's your experience with Glendronach 15 in the last couple of years? Please dive in. Share your thoughts with me. Should I buy it? Shouldn't I buy it? But today I'm going to nose it, taste it and score it, guys. And as usual, get myself gone. So, yeah, colour-wise, nice, rich, dark gold maybe, light amber, maybe a light copper colour. Really, really nice. Lovely, lovely stuff. But let's uh, let's dive in and nose it. 46%, non-chill filtered as far as I know. The problem we had was the natural colour disappeared off the, the tubes. Some people are telling me it's still natural colour. Some people are telling me it's not. They've just made a business decision to take it off the packaging. So guys, so make up your own mind. We'll try and make up our minds today. But let, let's nose this. So yes, yes, it's a big bust of sherry. Big, big sherry note. Lots of berry fruit. Red berries, dark berries, maybe a wee bit of strawberry, a wee bit of raspberry. Blackberry maybe, a wee bit of blackberry maybe. And then there's this wonderful, wonderful chocolate note. So see, it's been a wee while, guys, to even tackle this one. So this is this is a eye-opener for me. Chocolate, very chocolatey, dark chocolate. Same time, it's nutty. Walnut, hazelnut. And it has that, what I tend to find in a lot of sherry notes, it has that nice orange thing going on, orange peel, maybe orange. There's an orange, you know. With that chocolate, it's a little bit minty, and it reminds me almost of an after eight mint. We have a, a chocolate minty sweet here in the UK. Probably have it elsewhere, but it's an after eight mint here. It's like a after dinner mint. It has that after eight chocolatey minty thing going on. And it's, it's it's quite boozy on the nose. It's the raisins, figs, dates, all, all the usual sherry stuff there. Okay, wow. It's been a while, old friend. Let's see if we can try and get reacquainted and convince me to pick up another bottle of you, my friend. But, guys, could I send it down the hatch? That is, uh, looks like a big dram, but it's not. As your usual, you'll know it's just a typical little whiskey friend, computer glasses. They, they are back in stock, guys. If you feel you want to help support the channel, Pick up the computer glass, maybe a nosing glass, a Glen Cairn nosing glass. They are available. Just while we're on the subject, guys, if you are not subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Let's communicate between me and thee. 
It's completely free. It still doesn't cost you anything. You can watch for free. You can do whatever you like to do. If you like to, if you like to be notified, just click the subscribe button, guys. Click the bell. You'll be notified whenever I put on the video. It's free. Doesn't cost. You're helping the channel massively on its way to the magical AK. YouTube like it. Alan likes it. Hopefully, you guys like it. So yeah. But other than that, guys, if you want to do that. Crack on. Let's taste it. Mmm. Dry arrival. A little bit of spicy cinnamon. Maybe some ginger. Spicy, dry. Not for long. It's becoming mouth watering, mouth coating, fruity. Maybe apricots come to mind. Peaches, maybe. <laughs> Stewed apricot. Might even be a little bit of tinned fruit, tinned apricot. That tinned with the with the juice in there. It's juicy. Then it's got a little bit dark. Maybe some dark honey kicking around, sticky honey, dark fruits, black grape. I always remember this from the first bottle I ever bought. It was nutty. That walnut thing, that hazelnut thing is definitely there. Chocolatey, nutty. Not much mint. The mint on the nose is not there, but the chocolate is definitely there. Dark chocolate. Maybe that, that dark fruit thing as well. Maybe a bit of dark plum going on there, dark grape. Cinnamon, cinnamon heading to the finish. The spice is carrying through the cinnamon, the clove. Into the finish. Let's do a second set before we do the finish, guys. Let's quick on. Well, finish. The spice is. Kicking through from the, the end of the back end of the palate into the finish. So some cinnamon, some clove. But the finish is, is long. It's honeyed. It's sticky honey. It's more sticky and chewy than, than juicy. Chocolate. Definitely chocolate. The mint's there now. The mint's back. There's a bit of mint in the finish. Chocolate mint in the finish. Lost it a little bit in the palate, but it... Heading back towards the finish, it's came back. Cinnamon, clove, a little bit of spice. Real, real nice. Okay, so guys, I've enjoyed it. It's been a while. This was my whiskey of choice back in the day. I'm not going to say it's changing my life again because it's different. Back then, I was new to whiskey. That was probably... It, unlike most people, guys, I've started on probably one of the best iconic whiskies of all time is my first whiskey ever to try, which is a wee bit unusual. That's where it where it, it stopped me in my tracks. This one is nice. It's different. Have I been a wee bit harsh and maybe dropping Glendronach? Should I go back to Glendronach? That, that was a nice experience. I, mean, I thoroughly enjoyed that. As I say, it's been a wee while since it took me a trip down memory lane back down the old Glendronach Road. And yes, I probably feel that I would now go out and restock this one. Price-wise, again, it's, it's jumped again. I think it's into the kind of 70, 65 to £75 price bracket, which, again, it's just a way of life at the minute. But yeah, no, I think I would go out and buy one. In fact, I might just pick up another, just... Uh, so I'm glad I went back to try this, guys. But guys, if you've have have you done the same thing? Have you dropped Glendronach? Have you not went back to them? Have you got over the the, the change? Is Brown Foreman still doing it? Is Rachel Barry still producing great stuff? Dive in, share your comments with me, guys. YouTube likes it, Alan likes it. But yeah, that's pretty much guys, this one. I'm Alan, I'm the whiskey friend. Until next time, don't forget to Send great whiskey straight down the hatch, you know, always remember. The pleasure is in the sharing. Until the next one, guys. See you soon. Cheers now.